Liebe Zuschauer, es ist nach einer Weile hin, bis Großbritannien über den Verbleib in der Europäischen Union abstimmt oder den Austritt, den sogenannten Brexit. Fragt man Ökonomen, Wirtschaftswissenschaftler, was hat die Financial Times getan? 100 Befragte, da sagen ungefähr drei Viertel, die mittleren Aussichten werden für Großbritannien recht schwierig sein und nur 8 Prozent sind sehr optimistisch. Was heißt das für die Abstimmung? Welche Folgen sehen Kapitalmarktexperten? Darüber spreche ich mit Stephen Jones von Games Capital. Welcome, Stephen Jones. Hello. Um, Mr. Jones, you just came over from London. Um, how is the atmosphere uh, two months ahead of the referendum, the ball of the polls? You're right to say that we're at the very start of what's a 10-week campaign, and we're just one week into that now. Um, so the atmosphere is one where we are beginning to map out the arguments that we will concentrate on over the period to the 23rd of June. Um, positions and um, issues are beginning to be uh, fine-tuned, really, about uh, where the debate will, will really take place in the latter stages of the campaigns. Fine tuning is a good idea. Mark Carney, the governor of the Bank of England, described the prospect of a Brexit as the biggest domestic financial stability risk facing the UK. Do you agree? I definitely think it's it's one of the major events of 2017, <laughs> obviously. Um, I think you have to put it in the context, though, of uh, the, the other um, financial uh, stability issues that we face, which have been largely dealt with through strong capitalization of the banks now, um, better regulation and understanding of the new capital market that we operate in, um, both in the UK and across Europe. So it, it is an issue. Um, it is right that the regulator and the bank of of England should be concerned about it, yeah. but uh, it's not disproportionate, it's not huge in the context of history, I don't think. Okay. Michael Gove, one of the leading conservative campaigners to leave the European Union, said Britain will move outside the US single market and instead join Bosnia, Serbia, Albania and Ukraine. Uh, is that British humor? Is he, is he kidding us? He's a very enthusiastic uh, speaker uh, and uses, uh, uses some quite complicated and, and sometimes British humour um, in getting his points across. So I can understand why that, that phraseology looks uh, confusing. Um, he, he is passionate in his advocacy and his arguments uh, to leave the uh, EU. He believes that a, a, a sovereign uh, state, an independent state in Britain would flourish. Um, there's lots of arguments on the other side against him that we will hear over the next eight weeks or so um, that refutes that. Um, uh, it will be an impassioned campaign around an important issue um, and uh, Mr Gove will be a contributor to that. Okay. The short-term consequences will be most immediately important for British households, households and of course for the rest of the world. The Bank of England sees first impacts already on the British economy uh, with declining foreign investments and with a declining currency. Um, is that a kind of warning of the Bank of England? Uh, we've seen um, the main reaction function um, around the run-up to the beginning of this debate coming through sterling. Yes, sterling against the euro, against the dollar, against the basket of trade-weighted currencies is about 8% weaker over the beginning of this year. So um, that is beginning to price some of the uncertainty that perhaps we live with for the next couple of months. Um, what that does to British households um, is is fairly modest. I mean, the UK domestic economy um, is still growing quite well. You know, it, against the slow growth seen in Europe, we're doing exceptionally well at one and a half, two percent per annum growth. Um, and uh, we don't see that being terribly disrupted by the debate and the campaign. And um, what happens afterwards, of course, is a different matter. But there's enough momentum in the UK um, for households and businesses uh, to be okay into the middle of the year in the vote. Okay. Um, nobody, ca nobody can predict what happens if Britain leaves the EU, whether the momentum stays strong. Um, um, But in a poll of more than 100 economists for the Financial Times, more than three quarters uh, said um, Brexit would adversely affect the UK's medium-term economic prospects, nine times more than the 8% optimists. Um, 
let's talk about three scenarios, what can happen. Scenario one, some expect a booming Britain. Um, Patrick Mitford from Cardiff Business School says, in the long term, Brexit will herald a major growth boosting period as the UK breaks free of the over mighty European Union. Okay, okay, everything fine for you and the booming Britain. Why did you join the European Union if you can do much stronger and better without the rest of Europe? There are some very um, uh, strong uh, views being expressed by, by very clever people um, who can back them up. Um, uh, your point that nobody knows um, uh, is perhaps the strongest point that sits with me. Um, you can see uh, scenarios where over the long term um, uh, a favourable uh, set of new agreements with trading partners and uh, institutions around the world are put in place that uh, allows the UK, which is an entrepreneurial economy, um, an already a fairly independent economy in that you know we have our own currency still, we have an independent central bank, we are used to um, acting sort of on the periphery of, of Europe perhaps, um, we are not a member of the Eurozone obviously, um, can thrive um, in that scenario then over the long term you might see an enhancement to the path of growth um, for the UK. But I think that uh, other scenarios that people look at and concentrate on do at least acknowledge that in the transition to whatever happens, um, then there is uncertainty. And that uncertainty will be a drag on uh, activity and confidence yeah. and um, that uh, uh, you, know, you might have to endure that for some time before getting to any better place or different place. Okay, uh, scenario two, as you said, a travel transition. Can it mean a sharp fall in sterling? Sterling will be the, the sort of day-to-day -day, um, barometer uh, of what's happening uh, around both the debate to the referendum and to the negotiation or whatever happens after it. Um, so uh, we largely think that the, that the sterling uh, currency has done enough at the moment. It, as I say, it's, it's depreciated by about 8% year-to-date. It can probably tread water here. Most people who have uh, uh, assets to hedge have already done that. Um, and uh, it'll be interesting um, to see the move on the actual day of the result, um, which will be entirely in line with, with uh, whether we remain or leave. Uh, remain vote sees sterling jump stronger. Strong economy, higher interest rate, um, naturally supportive. Um, a leave vote with a period of uncertainty around perhaps two to three years of negotiation and conversation about how that occurs um, would see sterling lose sort of three to four percent on the day and probably weaken thereafter. Okay, in the worst case there are more discussions and negotiations um, and the worst case would be Britain's economy suffers after Brexit. Um, I wonder, is it really that hard to cope with some rules that make a union work? I think that we are uh, in the UK very used to dealing with rules uh, and actually some of the, the, the rules I don't think are going to be the source of debate. Um, uh, it is um, perhaps a more uh, em emotional um, a heartfelt type idea of control of rules and a, a voice about setting the detail of them. Um, and that is what is being uh, thought about. It is how um, uh, Britain uh, should uh, progress over the next three to four to five decades where the power for um, the regulation around that economic activity and things should sit. Uh, and those are debates about Britain's place in the world that uh, we are having rather than necessarily complaining about living by rules. Okay. What will Brexit mean for the City of London and the financial industry? Uh, much has been uh, uh, talked about this and there's no doubt that uh, uh, London remains a very uh, important market for European uh, customers to transact financial transactions as well as uh, global companies to uh, work in the financial markets. Um, so again uncertainty around how those relationships uh, would develop uh, wouldn't be good 
but the city is a global financial center, not just a European one, um, and has always been innovative and um, uh, has some very exceptional uh, skills within it. And there'll still be a market for that. So again, we tend to think that it's, it's, a, it's a slowing, transitioning effect rather than a catastrophe. Okay. Uh, from investors' point of view, of view uh, we saw a decline in FTSE over 10 percent or 12 months, and a decline in sterling. Um, how can uh, investors position ahead of the poll? Uh, I think that um, the decline in, in in equity markets is not that much out of line with volatility and activity elsewhere. Um, indeed, uh, 70 percent of earnings for the largest companies in the UK, the FTSE 100 index, come from overseas activity. And that's actually naturally enhanced by a slightly weaker pound and some currency depreciation. So we are gently positive on the outlook for uh, sterling uh, equity risk assets. We don't think that that is the um, asset class to be short of. Um, the currency is the one which will be volatile and will follow the debate more closely. Um, and um, some of the sterling uh, corporate credit that's available, um, UK banks issuing in euros and dollars perhaps will be a bit weaker and spreads will widen there. So um, currency and credit is probably um, more important for uh, investors to think about than equity markets, I would say. Okay. Um, would Britain remain a member of the European Union under certain fixed conditions? I think that you know we we are a core member of the European Union now. Um, I think that the benefit that uh, uh, the UK economy uh, gets from that is significant. Um, I also think the benefit that the European economy gets from the UK being a member is significant as well. Um, you know, seven percent of German exports go to the UK. We represent a, a large and prosperous market. And 50 percent of the EU's uh, UK's uh, exports goes to Britain, yes. to, 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 to the European Union. In, in, indeed, yes. Um, uh, and uh, therefore it's a mutualistic relationship um, and one that uh, has benefits for both sides. And if it's changed, maybe has consequences for both sides. Um, uh, you know, how that, how that happens will be um, decided on the 23rd, 24th of June when the results will be um, counted and uh, announced overnight. Uh, the counting centre will be Uh, in Manchester um, and you'll be able to see very quickly um, before markets open on the 24th uh, the result uh, of the referendum on Brexit in the UK. Thank you, Stephen Jones. Liebe Zuschauer, noch ist das Ergebnis des, äh, des EU-Referendums zum Brexit in Großbritannien offen. Das Zünglein an der La Waage werden wahrscheinlich die vielen unentschlossen sein. In Großbritannien, vor allem in der City of London, äh, ist man im Moment noch relativ entspannt, wie Stephen Jones uns berichtet hat. Da denkt man eher, dass es äh, marginale, kurzfristige, sanfte Auswirkungen gibt, sofern Großbritannien wirklich die Europäische Union verlässt. Eine harte Landung oder aber gerade einen äh, enormen äh, wirtschaftlichen Aufschluss. Erwarten wohl eher die wenigsten. Wichtig ist, ähm, was die Banken im Kreditvergabesektor machen und wichtig ist auch, wie sich die Währung entwickelt. Das Pfund hat auf Jahressicht schon fast 10 Prozent verloren. Aber Großbritannien sieht sich in einer starken Position, sieht auch, ähm, dass viele Exporte in die EU gehen, es aber auch, sieht aber auch, dass die EU und insbesondere Deutschland sehr von dieser Partnerschaft profitieren und was am 23. Juni passiert, das erfahren Sie spätestens am nächsten Tag, am nächsten Börsentag hier an der Börse und auch bei deraktionär.tv.